So, I was intending on uh, starting this as a blog series about, uh, or rather a vlog series about just talking, just walking and talking. That's what it was going to be. It was going to be me detailing my weird, esoteric, highly specific opinions about otaku nerd shit walking around the neighborhood at night. But, as you can probably hear, it's raining. So, fuck it. Just do it sitting on the porch. So, let me tell you about Bloody Roar. Uh, Bloody Roar is a fighting game series that most people have probably heard of but don't know much about. Uh, started in 1997 and went on for seven years going from four mainline entries and one spin-off between the third and fourth game. Um, so it came out the same year the first game came out in the same year as uh, Tekken 3. So not a great time to start up your new franchise but honestly all things considered Tekken 7 sold 7 million units um, whereas the first Bloody Roar, or as it was first known in American arcades as Beasterizer, because uh, that's what they called it when all the characters, <coughs> excuse me, transformed into their beast modes, they called it Beasterizing. Um, uh, this game sold over 400k, I believe. Uh, so pretty good, pretty good, all things considered, for uh, for a start. You know the. The whole uh, genre of fighting games was starting to pick up steam around then. So, yeah, well, Bloody Roar obviously wasn't going to make nearly as much money as Tekken. It definitely had its own appeal from the start, because as you would probably presume from the, uh, the title, Bloody Roar is about cool dudes who in the story are called zoanthropes, or zoanthropes, or whatever. And they're basically just people who have a beast mode. You know, you have the main guy, his name is Yugo, and he's the wolf. And so he can basically turn into a werewolf. And, see, it's interesting thinking about the marketing of Bloody Roar, because when you think of that sort of thing, your modern mind wants to jump to furries, but if you actually look at the old uh, marketing stuff for Bloody Roar, it's not like that at all. There are a couple characters that are really cute, like there's this girl who turns into a big bunny, and uh, there's a, a couple other characters who are more uh, pretty or cute looking that uh, I'll talk about later. But for the most part, promotional art you'll see from the for the series is really visceral. Like, the you guy, you go, turning into his wolf form, it's portrayed as a painful experience. Like, they're becoming an altered beast, and it's and it's not cartoon anime versions of animals. They are highly... they all stand upright, but for the most part, they're pretty anatomically correct and realistic looking. Um, and there are a couple of guys who turn into tigers in the series, so they basically just turn into King uh, from Tekken, and that's cool. And it's because they have realistic tiger heads, and they look like they're gonna rip your throat out, and... Yeah, the game was never... Bloody Roar itself was never an extremely violent game. But... The way that the transformation was portrayed was very visceral. So there's not, like, blood effects in the game itself. But it's it was just portrayed as, like, a very intense situation. Turning into your beast arising, as it were. It's a very... Uh, and it, it's very violent, as it were. So, Bloody Roar, that's, uh, one of the most interesting things about it is that obviously Bloody Roar, uh, and the subtitle of the spinoff, Primal Fury, it implies this idea of rage, this idea of human beings transforming, but at, kind of at the same de-evolving into a more primal, carnal, instinct, like, state of mind, where they activate that proverbial killer instinct, you know? And it's, uh, pretty intense and cool, 
And it's pretty unique considering every other franchise, because, you know, it's not a common idea, people transforming into beast forms. You know, you have uh, Animorphs, Beast Wars, Transformers, you know. So, but Bloody Roar just, it had a lot of appeal in terms of the the visceral feeling of it all. And because when they go beast form, they look fucking pissed off. Like, Yugo, when he turns into his wolf form, he looks like he's about to kill a bitch. And it's pretty great. Um, so, the problem... Well, actually, one more thing. The most visceral part of Bloody Roar's aesthetic was probably the fact that uh, the main character select screen of the first game, I think, is inside, like, an animal's jaws. Like, the borders of the screen are teeth from the inside of an animal's mouth. Um... It's it's like your fucking Aaron Yeager being slurped down by the Titan, <laughs> except, you know, you're not getting any help. You're just being eaten. So yeah, uh, furry roar. That's basically all it's about. So the problem with bloody roar is that it, to me at least, is that they could never fully commit to the bit. Um, and what I mean by this is that. There's a lot of characters such as Uriko, the Half Beast, Jenny the Bat, Shion the Unborn, and Uranus the Chimera. And that's another cool thing about Bloody Roar is that everyone's beast form is kind of like their title. Like on the character select screen for the games, they're, they're, they won't be given a last name. It'll just be Sh Yugo, the wolf, and uh, Busuzima, the chameleon, and whatnot. And it, 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 it just feels fucking cool, you know? So, where we come with problems is that, first of all, Uriko, um, she is a cute girl... In, who wears a jacket that is too big for her, so the sleeves hang off of her hands, and she flings, she flings the sleeves around, and it's, that's like a cute thing she does, you know, um, and she's a half beast, cause in the story mode she was uh, captured and experimented on, uh, to, you know, not to to activate her beast mode unnaturally, basically, so. When she goes into beast mode, she doesn't turn into a big-ass cat creature. She turns into a Neko-chan. Which is to say, she has little whiskers, she's got little slit ears, or little slit eyes, the cat ears on top, like she's wearing a fucking hairband, and a tail, and she's got little paws, pawsies. Little cutie pie. That's fucking bullshit. I wanted to turn into a fucked up evil cat beast that'll claw my eyes out, man. I don't get your Neko Chan shit out of my bloody roar. The fucking character select screen implies that these that these are fucking beasts in the animal kingdom and they're gonna eat me. Fucking A, they're predators. I want any of this anime shit. Then you get to Jenny the Bat, and Jenny the Bat kind of looks like Vice and Mature from King of Fighters, where she has a sexy secretary look to her. Um, she's actually like a super spy slash model or some stupid shit. Um, and it's unfortunate uh, that she has a bat form, but it's not. Because if you've ever seen a real-life bat, they're fucking horrifying. They're super gross. They have weird pig faces most of the time. There are a couple of types of bat that are sort of cute. Um, found one on Twitter just the other day. But when you think of a bat, you think of like the big gross bat boss from Resident Evil 5, you know? Just the, the ears and the tiny beady little eyes and a fucking pig nose. Gross mouth with the little fangs in it. Wrinkly. And guess what, Jenny? She They're not going to make their sexy, bit, their sexy blonde woman look like that. So she becomes fucking Rouge the Bat from Sonic the Hedgehog, basically. Where she's... 
she's got the ears and wings and the rest of her is just kind of naked with these sort of tribal tattoo looking things on her body and it's stupid and I don't like it and it's dumb and moving on um Uranus the Chimera as you could probably tell Uranus is like a code name she was grown in the lab um she was experimented on and turned into the Chimera which again since turning people people with beast beast modes is an extremely simple idea I don't I don't I don't begrudge anyone for, for trying to play with the idea and be really creative with it and kind of push the edge of what you can do with it. It makes sense. So, the, I actually really like the idea of them doing mythological creatures. Um, in Bloody Roar Primal Fury, I think, is when the, the guy who is the Phoenix was introduced. And Uranus was introduced before that, I believe. And... And actually, later on in Bloody Roar 4, where the story mode really goes downhill, it uh, there's someone who's the fucking Nine Tails, and someone there's finally a guy who's the Dragon, and that's that that's all fine by me, especially the Phoenix. That shit's all, that's great. But with the Chimera, you know, people think that Chimera is just a term you can use to describe an amalgamated beast, and it's because of Full Metal Alchemist, you know. So people think it's just an alchemical pseudo-fictional term like cyborg or android that describes that describes a creature that has biologically been fused when that's not the thing when you think of a chimera you're supposed to think of a lion and a goat and a snake fused together into a horrifying sin against god in anime so Interestingly, Bloody Roar actually somewhat follows that blueprint, but whereas the Chimera I just described is super cool and interesting, even if it is like a simple idea of just like head and like body of lion with goat head and snake tail, the, the, the Chimera in Bloody Roar that Uranus turns into just kind of looks like like a monster that Guts would fight in Berserk, I guess. It's just a big, muscly, upright, super jacked goat with lion paws and more horns than usual. So it, it doesn't even know what it wants to be. It doesn't know if it wants to be a completely original creature or follow the Greek myth. I don't fucking know, man. It's just... And it also has weird tribal tattoos, like, going down to its, from eyes to its chest. I don't know, man. Shion the Unborn is where we enter the real bullshit territory. So, Shion, I think, is, and yes, X-I-O-N, pronounced the same way as Shion from Kingdom Hearts. Um... The un... He, he's supposed to sort of be the main an antagonist? Uh, he kind of looks like if Sephiroth had a haircut. Um... And he wears, like, this red jacket thing that kind of looks like something that DMC1 Dante would wear. Um, and his unborn design is just like a weird skull bug man. It, in the story mode, the unborn is supposed to be this idea of a species of beings that is extinct, basically. So, Shion's beast form is supposed to be evocative of the spirit of vengeance, I guess? I don't really know, of like the collective souls of all the unborn creatures that never got to evolve because natural selections got to their section of the evolutionary tree before they could spread. I don't fucking know, man. It's fucking stupid. Um, and then, and then this his his legacy lives on in Bloody Roar Four after his death, uh, with the sort of new main character Nagi the Spurious, and Nagi the Spurious. 
is uh, a chick who kind of looks like Kasumi from Dead or Alive, except with a fucked up lobster claw. But all like she looks just like Kasumi, and then she goes into beast mode, and all that happens is that she gets some again more weird. They kind of look like natural plated armor, but they look like fucking tribal tattoos. And then lobster claw and heterochromia. Because that's the only way anime knows how to visually signify that a character is a special little snowflake. Just give them fucking differently colored eyes. Um, so yeah, apparently spurious is a biology, biology term, meaning uh, an organism that is together, but like diverse in its structure or some shit. Yeah, you know what? I guess she is pretty diverse in her structure, normal chick with lobster claw. But it's fucking stupid. It's not an ant. If she was actual lobster and she turned into an upright monster, like like down from the deep Cthulhu monster claw, dude, th I'd, I'd be fucking down with that. I don't give a shit. Could you imagine if someone, like if there was a dude named Edward the Eldritch or, or something? Uh, another unintentional... FMA reference there. And he was just like a Cthulhu tentacle monster that mankind didn't know about? That would be fucking awesome. But no. Shion the Unborn. And Nagi. The Spurious. That's what we fucking get. And granted, a lot of people don't... A lot of people assume that no one gives a shit about fighting game lore. Except for Guilty Gear fans, obviously. Shout out to Tom Oliver. But it's just fucking... People do. People care about fighting game lore because Bloody Roar was the last game in the series. And I firmly believe that interest was lost in the series because the story mode was fucking stupid. Granted, there was a guy who was a crow and he turned into like a big crow and he had sick air combos and that's a cool gameplay thing. But at the end of the day, if the new characters suck people won't buy it you know it can have equally or better gameplay and if the characters just aren't appealing you know it's from a marketing perspective you're just not going to get enough people interested you know there's a reason that street fighter 3 new generation didn't you know it didn't do so great there's a reason people say that street fighter alpha and street fighter ex there's a reason that back in the day people said that those were the true Street Fighter 3 because they didn't get rid of Chun-Li and Guile and Kami and all of the characters that people actually fucking recognized. You know? So like and granted Bloody Roar didn't even do that. Technically Street Fighter 3 didn't do that. Ryu and Ken were still in it. Yugo and like I'm pretty sure Gato were still in Bloody Roar 4, but you know, when you have dumbass looking monster girl on the front cover of your game, it's going to drive some people away. So it's better to just have the cool guy being like, Ooh, ah, fuck, I'm turning into a fucking werewolf. Ooh. And make it look really intense so that all the edgy, edgy teenagers will want to buy it. You know. Just, you know, you just can't get your ass up and uh, up, your, up, your ass up in your head or your head up in your ass about your own lore. That's all I'm saying. I hope they bring. I hope they. Bleh, I hope they bring, Bloody Roar back one day. Cause you know, furry market. Vor market. It's bigger than it's ever been, man. <laughs>